Soccer is the biggest sport in the world. The competition is fierce and it could get tougher. An entrepreneur teamed up with former professional football player Ronaldo to open soccer academies in three countries, including Brazil, the United States, and China. The Chinese, who rank 84th in the football rankings, are looking to win their first World Cup over the next decade. That's where Ronaldo and Carlos Martins come in. The Ronaldo Academy seeks to start teaching the sport to four-year-olds and to make them rising stars of the sport at least by the age of 17. Joining us now to discuss how exactly are the Chinese going to go from number 84 to probably number one is the entrepreneur behind this idea, Carlos Martins. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. So l let me begin. You know, obviously we know this sport is the most popular sport in the world. Uh, who approached who to open the academies? Did you approach uh, Ronaldo or did Ronaldo approach you and then you approached the governments of these countries? Actually, a year ago, Ronaldo and I uh, were vacationing in Orlando, Florida. And at that time, a certain day, Ronaldo said, Look, Carlos, I am known as the soccer phenomenon. I am known as the soccer genius, the soccer whiz having been elected several years the best <laughs> soccer player in the world. You are known as the education with education genius, having built a large chain of language schools with over 3,000 schools servicing one million students. Why you don't get together and put together a program to teach young kids and teenagers how to play soccer? So this is how the Ronaldo Academy started a year ago here in Orlando, Florida. But your, your plan to open 30 academies uh, where the academies are up and running at least, how difficult do you see that? I mean, it's such an ambitious project. We work through the franchising system mm. so that we offer the brand, we offer the methodology, we offer a system, a proven successful system that allows both kids, teenagers, and of course, uh, the instructors, the coaches, the teachers, to use this proven methodology that Ronaldo himself has developed. Wh which so is Ronaldo what, if I can ask you, can you tell us a little bit about that? So what Ronaldo has done, he has made a collection of all the techniques and all the small little secrets that he has used himself in his career to start from scratch and become a, a world uh, phenomenon in the soccer field. But, but the Brazilian soccer is such a unique form of soccer. It's obviously celebrated around the world. Um, how difficult do you think it's going to be to teach countries that have a very different culture when it comes to the beautiful game than Brazil? I mean, there, there's a certain part of Brazilian soccer or football that is because of the lifestyle in Brazil and the story of these individuals. Can you really just import that from Brazil to China, the United States, and elsewhere? I do agree with you that really uh, soccer is part of the Brazilian culture. As you know, kids when they're three, four, five years old, even in poverty, they don't have shoes, they don't have right. the special uh, equipment, but they're out playing on the street. But look, if we stop and see, back in the 80s, a Brazilian soccer player Pelé came to the United States and he helped America prepare to qualify to host its first World Cup. The same thing happened with soccer player Zico when he went to Japan and he helped prepare the country uh, to host its first uh, World Cup. And now Ronaldo and myself have this big dream to help the Chinese government and the Chinese sports official to prepare and qualify to host their first World Cup. And we all know that this is not going to be a process that will happen from one day to the other. It's a long process, but if we don't start now, we will never achieve this purpose. Um, do you really think that you can help China, not necessarily, I mean, it's been to the World Cup, but do you genuinely believe that China has a chance of winning the World Cup when it doesn't necessarily have one of the strongest domestic leagues? I mean, even countries like Spain or England that have very powerful domestic leagues and academies, they've only won the World Cup once. Okay, look, our dream, we understand that step by step. We want first to prepare the country to host its first World Cup. Winning the World Cup is a different ball game. Right. <laughs> so we just understand that um, 
just like Japan and the United States already had their first World Cup, not necessarily they won the World Cup, but it's part of the game. Well, I can't, uh, I can't let you go without asking you a question about Brazilian uh, football and the national team there. Uh, th there's a lot of criticism maybe that they're not playing very well. Maybe they need some help from the academies within Brazil these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you one truth. Brazil team has many stars. They do. But we don't have a team. So they're all great stars. They play in Europe. They play in America. They play in Asia. But they don't play as a team. So I accept. I recognize, I acknowledge, this is our main problem. We have too many stars. And well, you're, you're going to have the academies in Brazil as well, so that's very good. We can bring some of that, uh, some of that flair back to the Brazilian team. All right. Uh, Mr. Carlos Martins, thank you very much, sir, for your time, and thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's been a pleasure. Wish you the best of luck. See you. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Roadmap on Shift by MSNBC. We'll be right back.